Hi, my name is Cindy Rang with the Fabric Patch in Ephrata, Washington. You can find us at www.fabricpatch.net. I am a retired nurse practitioner. I worked for four years as a registered nurse and 20 years as a nurse practitioner, and now I run a busy quilt shop with my daughter full time. We have done five previous mask videos. Our first mask video was actually in March, I think it was on March 9th. We're up here in Washington state and we were the first state in the nation to end up with coronavirus and we were already feeling the lack of PPE. So we started making masks in March. We then did a follow-up video also in March, uh, what to do if you're running out of supplies. We were running out of toilet paper back then. We were also running out of interfacing and different products for masks back then. Uh, we did a third video. The third video was what is the difference between the flat masks that the hospitals were asking for and the personal fit mask. Um, we did a fourth video. I don't remember when that one was. And that was what we had learned after making 167,000 masks. Um, since then, we've made quite a few more, but numbers don't matter. Um, we learned a lot. We learned a lot about fit. We learned a lot about um, nose pieces, about products, about breathability. And then our last video, which we thought was going to be our last one, was the Jesse mask. And that was designed by Jesse Killian. And he did a whole different design that's very fitted, that gives a breathability factor because it kind of comes out like a beak. Well, now what's happening is it looks as if we did not abolish coronavirus, coronavirus in the United States or virtually anywhere. And uh, the kids are supposed to be going back to school. We were sort of waiting a little bit to see what the school districts were thinking. And it seems as if everybody is doing something different. Some have already made the decision to do it remotely. Some have already bought PPE because everybody is coming back. Um, some are still in the deciding phases. So what we want to do is we're not going to go through all of the deep details about mask construction. We're going to tip on a couple of those things that we've already discussed in the previous videos. We just want to give you some information so that you can make your own decision. We want to just give you some solutions so that you can help to make the right decision for your family because every child is different. Some are gonna wear them, some are not going to want to. Some are gonna be embarrassed by it. Some are gonna be excited about rocking their new mask. So we've got older students, we've got younger students, we've got compromised students. And so everybody is gonna to have to be a part of that decision. My belief is that the school system is probably going to offer some options and we have some things we can show you, but we also want to show you some different options. We've been testing lots of kids. We've been doing some measurements. We've been asking for feedback and we have options for adolescents, preteens, teenagers and young adults. We even have a seven-year-old here today that's going to be a model and we're going to show you how to get a proper fit. We have figured out how to make sure that a mask will fit every child. Oftentimes in our videos we just sort of talk straight through and we don't have a whole lot of editing but my guess is that in this video we're going to edit quite a lot and that's just because I want to take out anything that sounds extremely preachy. However, I just want to warn you that this is a subject that I feel very strongly about and I recognize that this is a subject that's controversial. I just don't know that it should be. I think the discussion about whether or not we should wear a mask just needs to end. All we're asking for you to do is to keep your germs to yourself. <clears throat> we don't care if you just phone it in and you wear one layer and you wear a simple scarf or if you want to go ahead and take it seriously and actually add the protective layers that you need. The CDC, the WHO, every healthcare professional and every scientist agrees that a mask worn by every individual is the only way that we're going to combat this virus. <clears throat> the proof is in the numbers that we see every day from the 43 page obituary section of the Houston Chronicle on Monday to the 300,000 new cases in one state. If you wonder why New Zealand is back up and running after only 30 days, 
fully back up and running with everybody open, everybody back to doing what they were doing before, it's because they had 100% compliance. Those guys stayed in their houses. One person out of the family went to the grocery store once a week. They wore their masks when they were out. They didn't drive. If you couldn't walk there carefully, you didn't go. It took them 30 days and their economy is fully back up and running. We are starting our fifth month and there's no end in sight. And you know what the difference is? Masks. We know that we need to wash our hands. We need to maintain six foot distance and we need to wear the masks. The point of the masks is to keep your germs to yourself. We already know this, it's nothing new. The virus is spread through droplets when we're speaking. There's a lot of confusion about airborne and I think that the lay person has that a little bit mixed up. What happens is that there's a difference between things that are gases that really is airborne and in the air all the time and things that are such small particles that they say that they stay suspended in the air for a long period of time and that's what we're dealing with. The idea, don't get it out in the air. So while I'm talking, micro droplets of fluid is coming out of my mouth. And within that, if I am infected with the coronavirus, it's going out into the air and it can spread that six feet or farther when I'm talking. So the idea of a mask is that it's like me doing this. It's like me holding something over my face so that the whole time I'm talking, I don't have things being spread all over the place. So at a minimum, wear a piece of cotton over your face to keep your germs to yourself when you're speaking. That's it. That's all we want. That's all we need to do. It's not that much to ask. Now, if you want to protect yourself further because you don't trust anybody else and that they're following their rules, you can add some layers in there that not only will protect others from you, but it'll protect you from others. Because the whole idea is that we want all of those little droplets to be suspended in that, in that layer. One other thing about that is that people are talking about the type of fabric that it needs to be and the holes and all of that. Well, keep in mind that, again, the particle is suspended in the droplet of fluid. So as long as what you're breathing into is, is absorbing that fluid, you're going to be fine. The particles are not climbing through. They don't have legs. They don't have wings. They're not going to get through, burst through, and start flying off into the air. It just doesn't happen like that. So we don't have to be nuts about it, but we do have to be careful about it. All we really need is to keep in mind that what we're doing is protecting others from our germs. That's it. That's it. And so the way that we need to explain it to our children is that we want to keep other people safe. When we cover our germs, that keeps our friends and our family safe because we don't know. How do you know if you really have the coronavirus? How do you know that you're not a spreader or a super spreader? You won't know. You won't know until it's too late. You could be somebody who's had it and you don't have any symptoms at all, but that doesn't mean that your 30-year-old neighbor isn't gonna die from it. So it's super simple. Just put other people first. And isn't that what you want to teach your children anyway? Let's just keep everybody safe. Let's keep on the mask. We're going to show you how you can make a mask that a child will wear, that will fit the child, that they might even like to wear, and that they won't feel uncomfortable or embarrassed in. We feel like we've done a bunch of research for you and we just want to share it with you. Okay, before we get started, we have a bunch of stuff on the table and some demonstrations um, and some modeling that we want to get to, but before we do that, I just want to mention that I know that this is a long video. The reason that we tend to do fairly long videos with a lot of talking is because I try to anticipate what your questions are going to be. I think I know them because I know what my questions were along the way while we were making masks. Um, but there's always something that I've forgotten or something that might not have been clear or something that I might have glazed over. So because of that, we are going to do a live Q&A session on YouTube on this Sunday, July 19th at 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. 
Um, we feel like that's going to give you enough time to kind of watch the video, maybe get some measurements, see what sort of questions you have before you really get started. We know that school is right around the corner and you want to get started and you want to get some things made and get some opinions from your students. So again, that'll be this Sunday, July 19th, 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. One other thing that I just want to mention, and again, just as a parent and a grandparent, um, I just think we need to be very, very careful about mask shaming. Um, I think we've been very aware of bullying for a while and um, there's no difference with this. I think that if you are a mask wearer, you need to wear your mask and you need to wear it proudly. And nobody needs to be a part of shaming somebody who's not wearing one or worse yet, those non-mask wearers who shame those of us who do wear them. I think we all just need to be nice. We need to be nice to each other and hopefully we'll be nice enough to each other that all of us will wear a mask, which is really what everybody wants. All right, so in our previous videos, and again, you can find all of them on our website. If you're not familiar, I'm not thinking that probably any of you are late to this game. I think all of you have probably have some masks. You've maybe already sewn some masks. For each of these masks, we'll talk about different options in terms of some of the stabilizers, but if you have questions about that, that can be something that I've probably already answered through Facebook messaging or emails, or again, it's something we can talk about on the live feed if you still have questions about that. We do suggest the non-woven interfacing or the Oli, the Oli, I'm just gonna grab this. This is Halyard 600. This is really the best thing. One layer of this is all you need to stop particles. Um, and this is just leftover from a hospital that we get. Um, there's also Oli Fun, and Oli Fun is um, the uh, fabric version of that. It does melt with an iron because, of course, it's just a, a plastic fabric, basically. Um, so we'll talk about that as we go along. The other thing that we want to mention are the nose pieces. Something that is going to help to keep your mask in place is a nose piece. Um, we kept getting these donated. We have decided to go ahead and purchase some because people were having such a hard time finding them. So we sell these in a packet of 20 on our website. The, they come seven inches. People think, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it seven inches, but that's way too much. It's gonna be really uncomfortable, but you can cut it down. I like four and a half inches for myself. For the children, I was cutting it in half and using three and a half inches. And you can easily cut it with a pair of scissors it does have a little adhesive back to it, so it'll stay in place while you either sew it down or sew around it. So we now have those. The other thing that's just an option that I just want to mention is that most of the masks that we made, we made first out of muslin. Muslin or just any inexpensive fabric that you just want to kind of play with. Play with it a little bit. Don't use your best fabric. Don't use all of your stabilizers. Just make something, make sure that the fit is right. Make sure that it's the way that you want it to be. And then you can go ahead and make any changes you need to. You can write right on the muslin to say, no, I need to shave off a little bit here. I need a little extra room there. And you can make sure that you have a good fit. And we'll show this a little bit later. Um, some of the masks that I think some of the school districts at least in some of our area are purchasing are these, and these are these little cloth masks. And I think you can also get these like a Costco and Rite Aid, there's different places. And they look like this. So the problem with these masks, and we'll have our model come up in a few minutes and, and put this on, is that it's one size. So what happens is by the time you put this on, you still have to figure out how to make sure that it fits. And that's really what we were finding was the biggest concern. We measured tons of kids and we found some interesting things out we found that almost every single three and four year old that we measured had the exact same facial measurements which was super odd almost every single one of them despite their height and their weight they had four and a half inches from bridge to chin four and a half inches from bridge to temple and four and a half inches from temple to chin 99.9% .9 of them did. But their head circumference, totally different. Anywhere from seven and a half inches to 13 inches. That's where the variation is. So what happens is we kept hearing from people saying, well, I printed off your pattern, I did the measurements exact, but for some reason it's not fitting. 
So we're gonna have our model come up here. We can go ahead and stop for a minute. So first I have to just say that the people that are in the video with me today, it's all family. This is my granddaughter, my seven-year-old granddaughter, Eliza. I touch her every day, I kiss her every day, and we're always close together. And so that's why she has to be protected, and she always, she's very careful where she goes, and she always wears her mask all the time. So she's been our tester. We've been working with some of the new designs. The other person that will be in the video a little bit later, if I forget to mention it, is of course my daughter, Brianna. And we also, we work in the shop together. All of us are here together every day. So we breathe each other's air, which is why we're very careful when we go out. Because otherwise, if you didn't wear your mask and you, you know, got it, then you would give it to me and I would give it to Papa and bad things would happen. So anyway, so that's why we're all up in each other's business here a little bit. So. Um, I just need to mention that. All right, so um, first I just wanna talk about for a second about the measurements that you will take because when we share the two patterns that are available, the measurements are important. And the reason that this is important is that perhaps your granddaughter that you're sewing for lives several states away. Um, so somebody else is gonna have to do these measurements for you. So what you need to do is you need to measure from the temple, so right, or I mean the bridge of the nose, which is gonna be right here to her temple, and I'm gonna turn her head, and that's just right here, right in front of her ear. So I'm gonna measure, if you leave your head just like that, Eliza, from there to over here, and she is four and three quarters is her measurement, and she has a very symmetrical face. We found that probably 90% of the kids that we measured had a symmetrical face, and that was kind of what Jesse was finding too with his patterns, and so then if you measure at that same place, to just underneath the chin, honey, can you tip your head up? So we're gonna go right up underneath where it would hit, it would hit right here, just underneath the chin, and then we're gonna do that same place, right back up to this temple again. Eliza's measurements are four and three quarters from each of those three places. You do want to know all of those measurements, and again, the majority of kids are going to ha have, the majority of the kids that we measured had symmetrical faces. Um, we did notice that as they got older, that was not the case because I think that as cartilage starts to develop, as we start to get fat stores, as different things happen, we end up with jowls, we end up with nose, you know, whatever is happening, cheekbones, different things will happen and that's what changes. And that's why when we talk about for teenagers, we have some different options that may not be quite so fitted if that's not what they want to wear. So. All right, so I know her measurements. So we're gonna come to this in a second about how to make sure that the mask fits. But first, this one, if we ask you to put this on again, this was her least favorite of everything that we did here of all of these masks. This was her least favorite. Honey, I'm gonna have you put that on. And so, first of all, again, they come in one size. And so this is a seven-year-old, oops. So of course it doesn't fit her. And so the idea, I'm gonna have you turn around the idea is they're going to have something that when you bring it back it's going to kind of connect back here so it could be a piece of velcro it could have something with a button on it there's all kinds of things but it's going to get caught in her hair and that's what she kept doing is the whole time we were trying to get it to fit how many times did we pull your hair <laughs> constant and and you can go ahead and turn back around honey and this was you hated this one right this was your least favorite of all of them. Um, the other thing too is that because it has to be so, I'm gonna put it back on you for a second. The reason it had to be so tight, it's like all up in her face, right? Didn't you feel like this one was super tight to her face? So she did not like this. Now, I don't wanna diss any school districts. I know that for some school districts, this may be all they can find. Um, this is certainly better than those nasty disposable things because I think at the same time we're learning about germs and we're learning about washing our hands, we need to remember that the environment is still at the forefront of our concerns. So the idea of having millions of disposable masks out there blowing into everybody's lawns, that is nasty. So I'm not a proponent of that. Um, at least these are washable, but these are not wearable. I'm not thinking that you're going to get compliance with this. If this could be all anybody has if they don't have somebody that can sew for them maybe this is all they're gonna get but hopefully we can come up with something a little bit better than this all right I want to demonstrate the Jesse mask for a minute in case any of you guys are are not familiar with it this is my Jesse mask can you hear me when I put this on can you kind of mm -hmm. so when I wear my Jesse mask 
I tie it and then I wait and so I just kind of keep it on I put it on for the day I keep it here these are all my germs no one is closer than this so this is me right here so I just pick this up hook it onto my nose and I hook it over my ears and then I have it up and I tend to I'm gonna drop it for a second I tend to leave the bottom undone just because mostly I'm just kind of wandering around everything is okay I feel like I'm still keeping things if I'm talking a lot and I'm in a group of people that might seem to be getting a little bit closer I might go ahead and tie that bottom one otherwise I just put it down pick it up all day long um, I want to show you that extra beak on there so there's an extra space of about of about an inch there and that's kind of nice because then when I'm talking it doesn't slip so that's why my favorite mask is the Jesse mask I just like all of that extra space there so I keep it on that's how I wear it this is your Jesse mask so here's what the difference is when we first made Eliza a Jesse mask and we were trying to figure out that dang elastic this is what the problem was and this is what everybody's problem is I'll bet that I don't know 70 70 how many Brianna probably 75 percent of the calls and messages that we get is what is the exact measurement of that elastic why didn't that mask fit I followed everything everything is right and the mask doesn't fit and it's because this measurement is so odd when you have kids I have cartilage and I have old person ears our ears continue to grow for our lifetime and our nose continues to grow yours has not grown very much yet and so she doesn't have a whole lot of cartilage and so oftentimes the elastic is just going to pull her poor little ears forward the other thing is that everybody it's just it's just a different size and when we mentioned the size of people's head circumference it's just always different it's and it's different we noticed on some of the girls that had massive hair but what if they're wearing it up in a bun what if they have these bigger pigtails on the back of the head um, what if they're wearing a French braid what if they're wearing a hat too many variations so my daughter and daughter-in-law were telling us about this now I have to admit I had never seen this before in my life the reason I had never seen this before in my life is because this is what's in the the pants of of children and so what happens is when you have a tiny tiny little girl like Eliza here um, she has to cinch up those pants because she's tall she's got long legs but she's got a tiny little waist and so what happens is these are found in the waistband and so you can cinch it up and button it to make that waistband fit I had chunky babies great big humongous chunky babies so these may have been in their pants but we were not interested in this we needed something that would gap the button and give us some extra room <laughs> Brianna is laughing in the background but she knows it's true yeah. so anyway we had chunky babies so I had never seen this and so as soon as we did see this it's like oh my gosh this is the answer this is what we need and so the reason for this is that you I've taken her measurements this Jesse mask fits her perfectly but what happened was the first mask that we gave her sometime yes whenever it was we put one on with seven inches of elastic and she said no it doesn't fit it doesn't fit and I thought well that's impossible it absolutely fit because as soon as we held it up to her it fit perfectly when we put the elastic on her it didn't fit we put a bigger piece of elastic on her it fit perfectly so that's why this is the key so what we did honey I'm just gonna help you with this or you go ahead and put this on and so what we did was we made her her Jessie mask we put this elastic on it and she can wear it wherever she thinks is comfortable and so she you can see she has it fits her f nicely all, she has closure all along the edge does she need to step closer to oh, you no, that's probably okay. she has tip up your chin to show them it's nice all along the bottom and along both sides it fits her up here if she were to go ahead and wear glasses she doesn't have any gap here so if she were to wear glasses, it would not fog up her glasses at all. And what we did is school is hopefully, school is gonna start in about a month. This fits her perfectly right here. 
as she grows a little bit, we've put a second button on there. So she can make it a little bit bigger so that if grandma put all of this work into these masks and they only fit her for a month, all we have to do is adjust the button. Because all it is, is if you give somebody, our number that we're telling everybody is, I should put my glasses on for this, honey, is 18 inches. Give everybody 18 inches for their mask. They can double it over, they can cut it, they can do whatever they want, but what I would suggest is just double it over and tuck that excess in so that you can use it later because you felt that that fit really well, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that happened, oh, we should have talked about it before I took it off, is that she has, you wanna put your finger up there for just a minute for me, she has all of that extra space right there. So what that extra space is for is that while she's talking and doing things, oh, we were gonna have you, Okay, we'll make this fast. All right. All right. You're so fine. All right, so fine. All right. Doesn't she look uncomfortable? I feel really bad. I just wanted to show you, I just wanted to prove this point, that this elastic, you can see that we cinched it up. And if we didn't make this clear before, this is buttonhole elastic. I'm gonna hold it up in a minute when I'm not, I'm not killing her. So this doesn't feel comfortable to you at all, does it? You would say that it does not fit. And you would say that you would not wear it. I think you're even having some eye bulging there. <laughs> so let's uh, loosen this. How does that feel now? Better. Way better. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you could wear that. Yeah. Yeah. And so now talk, go ahead and do the alphabet for us kind of slow. E, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Oh, I Perfect. Ah, see, and it doesn't slip. What's nice about the Jessie mask is a couple things. And do you feel like it's getting hot in there or anything? Mm -hmm. No. So what's happened is she has this little, it comes underneath her chin because we know that measurement and it's cinched up here at the top. So it's not riding up and it's not riding down. It's staying put. Plus again, she has about an extra inch there. So that whole idea of not having enough air and not having enough circulation, she's got a little bit more in there. So she feels pretty good. And you can see where it is adjustable. You can come up with some nice buttons. She has a little cupcake button on this side. They can pick some kind of fun things. But So this mask is kind of nice. And again, this is an option where if you really feel like you want to make sure that your child is protected, maybe you've got a, a lot of outbreaks in your area, maybe um, your child has some, um, some compromi compromised immune system, something else is going on, and you just wanna be really careful. This is that option where, when you're following the directions for the Jesse mask, and the Jesse mask was the fifth video, um, that was all we did, was we made it based on her measurements. There was one little adjustment that we made. And so her measurements, this was hers. And so this is one of the basic ones. We didn't have to adjust this. And she is, again, she is a tiny seven-year-old and her measurements were four and three quarters and she was symmetrical. So this is a four and three quarter mask pattern. So when you printed this off, oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't grab a pen. Oh, I have one. So Brianna, can you slide down in here to see this? So the only modification that we did is we printed off this four and three quarter measurement, printed that one off, and then down here, what happens with my mask is I sewed, I sewed all the way around, it came up, and I have my two ties, one there and one there. What we did with her is we only wanted the one tie, so from this top edge, we measured down one inch and made a mark. And then we went from that mark to this tip. This is our seam allowance here, so we went from that tip right there to there, and we drew a line, and that's it. So when we cut that out, where's her template? It's somewhere here. When we cut that out, that was her, her mask. And we're gonna show you at the end, if you feel like you wanna see this, we took some pictures as we were making it to be able to show you, but again, that's your cut line, so your sew line is going to be like this, basically. You still got that quarter inch. When you turn this right side, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, when you turn it right side out, it's a little bit difficult because you're putting all of that 
through those holes on both sides. But then we turned it in. We're going to have you, her, you turn for a second so they can see this side. We turned it in. We sewed that up so we still have this little piece right here. We put a button up at the top and we put a button. There's kind of a little ledge right there so we put two of them on there. And again, you have that adjustability and then you have this adjustability. So this comes in, let me hold this up closer for you guys so you can see it. This is buttonhole elastic. It's a buck a yard. We have it in stock and it is five eighths inch or three quarter inch in black or white. And again, we are suggesting that you give a child a half of a yard. You can give them more than that if you want to, it doesn't matter, it's cheap. They can cut it off if they want to. And where we cut off the end, it doesn't fray. So you can do whatever. You can also kind of fold it over because I think if you just have that little bit of extra so that as you go through the school year, you're maybe not making new ones until Christmas time. I mean, you know how kids grow. So um, anyway, it's a nice, it, it's what creates that adjustability. What so, size buttons did you put on time? Oh, the buttons are three quarter inch buttons. Three quarter inch is what's going to fit um, through the buttonhole. And it's kind of nice, and we'll talk about design here in a little bit, but there, it's kind of fun. We let her pick out. We have all kinds of fun buttons. I'm sure that you can find those you know, locally. We've got even some fun school age ones. You know, there's some pencils. We were thinking there's no such thing as a blackboard anymore, but we've got pencil erasers. You can put some letters on there, so. Anyway, you can make it kind of fun and design it so that it's something that they're kind of excited about. All right, let's go ahead and take that one off, honey. And so now we also want to show you another option. Are you good? Okay. Um, another option. This was the original mask pattern. So our very first video, the very first one that we did, um, this was the dust mask pattern that we used from Craft Passion. Um, we liked hers. Um, I think the one that you have that's a downloadable on our website looks just like this and it does not have a seam allowance on there. Um, I think that since then she has a new one that has a seam allowance, but for the kids, what I did for most of the kids' ones that I've made, we cut out. If you look at this, you can see that there's small children, there's um, middle age, so 7 to 12, and this is just sort of a rough estimate. So what I did was I cut Eliza's out on the orange, which gave me the seam allowance because what I wanted to make was the green size for her. So this is the one that I cut out, and this is the one that we printed off of our website. So when we made this, this is the one that she wears often, and this is that mask, and if you make it the way that we showed in the, in the video, you can either put ties or you can put elastic. And this is the problem, is everybody said, well, how big is this? Well, I could tell you five inches and it might be too small. I could tell you seven inches and it might be too small. This is what the problem is. So we're not making them with this kind of elastic anymore. Um, we're putting on this. The other thing that we started doing is we thought, well, how do we do that and bring that up? We were looking at a teardrop style and a couple other styles so that we have just that one point of contact. So um, what we did instead is this is the exact pattern. We did the exact same thing, but all we did is we just didn't put a second piece of elastic on it. We didn't put a second tie on it. And then we just added a little bit of decoration. So I don't know, let's put this one on you. I don't know if, there's your face. <laughs> So this one, so funny thing about this one, I can't tell, are, you, are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay, this one is her favorite. She likes this one the best, but she likes this one the best because it's cute. That's why she likes it. It has kind of this little princess thing going on. And um, who's the princess that wears that? Uh, Jasmine. Jasmine. For sure. Yeah, it's fantastic. All kinds of opportunities in terms of lace and rickrack and colors. And we're thinking some glitter. There's all kinds of things that we can do to this. Um, this one does have the layer of Oli in it. It has the two layers of cotton. Um, 
uh, because we just believe in that. We just believe in not only her keeping her germs to herself, but we want to protect her from other people's germs. And so, um, except for mine, of course, since I'm all up in your business. But, um, but anyway, um, this is her favorite because it's super, super cute. But what you have to notice about this is that, go ahead, honey, let's do the alphabet again. A, B, C, D, With your e, mouth open e, wide. H, I, J, K, L, See? Did you see it? <laughs> it slides. Q, R, X, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So what's happened, this is super cute. And I think if, you know, kids are a little bit older, maybe middle school, they may like something like this a lot. And also, I don't know if you notice, your ear piece isn't. I'm just going to squeeze your, your nose for a minute. I mean your nose piece so even with her nose piece secured pretty well this is still slipping the reason it's slipping is because it's not secured underneath her chin just a little bit like the Jesse mask was and so she likes this one and again this is a decision that parents have to make based on your child and what you think how many layers your child needs what are you going to do so that your child will actually keep it on for some kids and i think particularly for girls it is about appearance you know i don't want to look silly i do want to look cute i don't want anything to mess up my hair i don't want anything to mess up my makeup i mean i don't know we got all kinds of well maybe not makeup for you but we've got all kinds of issues going on she will wear this she will keep this on and she will like it every time we give her a new one that has some new glitter and sequins and different things on it. And she'll like to wear it. And again, if there's no mask shaming going on and if people are commenting on how cute her mask is, just as much as how cute her sweater is or whatever, then I think it's gonna make it good for everybody. So I just want you to be aware that this is a really nice compliance one, but it is gonna slip a little bit. And so part of the teaching process with kids is gonna be that whole idea of touching the mask. You know, touching it, pulling it down, and her hands being up there a lot. So, you know, it's just something that you have to watch for. And again, this is very adjustable because we've done the same thing. Honey, I'm gonna have you stand back here for a second. We're gonna turn. On this one, we just did the one button but um, because that's all it really needs because it's not it's, it's easily adjustable because it's not fitted underneath here it, it does have less of a fit so um, all she needs is a long enough piece of piece of elastic she could theoretically wear this one mask for the entire school year really she could because it's it's that adjustable this is the one for her brother and so you can see that the same idea you know it's pretty much the same size he is two years younger he's got little eyeballs and monsters and black tape but same idea it's going to fit him pretty much the same way we're pretty sure he didn't want any lace on his but um but anyway so and again that's all this pattern with no modifications at all all right all right, so we've washed our hands. Eliza is all scrubbed up and good to go and, um, uh, and safe. So speaking of that, we wanna talk about washing our masks. Uh, we do not share masks. We suggest that nobody share a mask. We also suggest that you wash your mask every single night after every um, wearing. And so what I do with mine is I hand wash it in the kitchen sink, hot water and soap. I just put the soap, hand agitate, scrub, 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 and then when I'm done, I just go ahead and leave it out on the kitchen sink to air dry, or on the kitchen counter, I mean, and then it's ready to go the next day. That's what works best for me because I know that it's been hand washed and everything is okay and it's good to go, and I wear it every day. Um, I do have a couple versions of it, but this one tends to be my favorite. If for some reason you have a whole lot of masks you need to wash, the other thing that you want to think about is just having like a lingerie bag because otherwise what will happen is everything gets super, super tangled in the washer and the dryer. So make sure you're washing those um, sensibly and make sure you're washing them often. Um, the other thing that I, I just wanted to mention, we don't know where to find these. You used to be able to find these at the dollar store for just a dollar. We did find some on the internet for $5 now, but um, this is another option just for an adjustable mask. And I'm not sure how long this would last, but this is just some knit cording and it has kind of a little slide on it. What this is actually for is for glasses. You put your sunglasses in it and then you um, hold your sunglasses. So you can find this. This is also uh, a reasonable thing, but at 
the moment we have a lot of the buttonhole elastic in because we are anticipating that that's what you guys are going to want all right so um, one other thing about the Jesse mask is that again for us this is our favorite this is still our favorite mask we feel like we really like the fitted style so that no matter what's happening if you're teaching a class if you are um, singing in class if you are interacting in class it's nice for you to be able to speak and not have to constantly be touching and adjusting your mask so this is still our favorite um, with just a slight little modification to be able to make it um, adjustable but I'm not entirely sure that the teenagers are going to like this and again I think that one of the points is compliance um, what are you going to send your child off to school with and you know that they're gonna leave it on all day um, so it might just be just as good just to make sure that you've got that figured out before they leave so that we know that they're following the rules that are set in place for your school district so what we found is that for the younger boys they liked the idea of the masks they were telling us what they wanted on their masks they wanted turtle fabric or they wanted blue fabric with red stars or whatever it was that they wanted they were real clear about the designs they wanted and they were actually excited about it the superman masks, the batman masks they like wearing them Again, that was our experience. But at about the age of 10 to 11, it started to change. They didn't want anybody looking at them. They didn't want anybody judging them. And if just one person thought that their mask looked silly, they didn't want to wear it anymore. So what was happening is a lot of the men around here are wearing gaiters, and a lot of the boys are liking those. So if you don't know what a gaiter is, um, we can make these, but the truth is they're super inexpensive. You can find them at Walmart. You can find them online. There's a company where I order them for our boys, and um, it's SA something. If you type in SA, they'll come right up. They've got all kinds of them, all kinds of styles. They're relatively inexpensive. You could probably buy some rayon knit and make it yourself, but really, if you just go ahead and buy a gaiter, um, they come like this. When you put them on, you just slide the whole thing over your neck. You kind of wear it like a cowl. And when it's time to put it on, you just slide it up over your face. Now, what you want to know is that a gaiter like this, this is one layer of cotton. So the whole purpose of this is that it's going to keep my droplets to myself. So this is the minimum requirement. If I have this on and I'm talking, I'm going to make sure that I'm not infecting anybody else around me. So this is this is good. This is fine. This meets the requirement. This is all right. If you as a parent are nervous and you want to make sure that not only we're protecting others, but your child is being protected from people who might not be following the rules, um, what you can do is you can just fold it over. Um, it's just a flat tube. Let me show you it came right out of the package just like this their package just like this this is a different this one is called hoorah I don't know this was maybe a ducks unlimited one I'm not sure which one this one was but anyway all you have to do nobody's neck is that long anyway so you got a whole lot of room up there so all you have to do is just tuck this over and in fact I have another one that was done like that and if you tuck that over you actually can go ahead and sew up along the seam right there. I mean, just do like a stitch in the ditch along there, stitch in the ditch along there, and you have a little pocket where you can either, you can put in a removable layer if you are somebody who likes the filter rather than the barrier, you can do that. The other thing is that you have two layers. So this is an option, this is an inexpensive option to get and try, maybe have your your um, son wear this see what he thinks see if he feels like it's comfortable most of our boys like it I have to say for me personally and my daughter we don't care for it because we find it to be way too tight I mean it is it is um, I don't know that I want to put this on I mean this is mine and it's brand new but you gonna put it on sure ah we have our next model Just for you guys. this is my daughter if you watch any of our Hi, videos yes. you already know her so yeah. Brittany, we'll put you behind. So um, the other one is my other, my daughter-in-law, Eliza's mom. So again, we're all the same germy germs. So here's the gator. So she's wearing it like this. So she wears it. So it's just a cowl. It's there. It's ready to go. Now keep in mind that every time she touches it, that's part of that thing. Some of you guys are all freaked out about people touching your mask. And no one should touch your mask ever. But if you're reaching up touching this, 
that's your germs. This is all you, all up in here, so it's no big deal. You're gonna do whatever. You're gonna still be washing your hands. So when it's time for her to put that on, she can bring it up and it covers her face. So what's nice about this is it's tight. So see, nothing is going around her ears. Stop right about there, right about there. Nothing is going around her ears. So women with oxygen tubing, men with oxygen tubing, anybody who's wearing glasses, anybody who has sore ears, it's not up there. You could tuck it up there if you wanted to. My husband wears his super high for some yeah. reason. Yeah, yes. do you see how, yeah, he wears it like all up, almost all half up. to his eyes, but I don't know why. But anyway, so you can wear it as high as you want, but you can see that it's, it's tight. So that's why it doesn't go anywhere. That's why the guys like it. But if anybody talks very much, you don't care for it because you feel like it's... Yeah, it's all up in business. I'm used, though, to the Jesse mask where I have my lips aren't touching anything. Yeah. But, yeah, my lips are all up in it. Yeah. It's tight in there. And I think the other thing that I noticed, because if we're out, like, on the side-by-sides or if you're out riding motorcycles, I mean, mm -hmm. that's what they're for is to keep all of the dust out of your face. They get wet. They get wet because they're right there and you're breathing. And that's the other, this is the other time really to mention the whole reason why people are so uncomfortable with masks and people who believe that they're breathing in their carbon dioxide, which they're not. But anyway, what happens is there's no air circulation. Did we talk mm -hmm. about this in the beginning? Uh, I don't think so. There's no air circulation. So when you have up here, you have no air in there. And so when you're breathing out, it is 98.7 degrees is the air that you're breathing out. It sits there and it creates that humidity. Up here, we have dry heat. There's no humidity up here. And so for us, it gets to be particularly uncomfortable because we're not used to that heat. It's not carbon dioxide poisoning, and that's not what's happening. It's just a lack of air circulation, and that's why people with asthma, sometimes they have a difficulty. Um, this would be hard if you had asthma. If you had asthma. There's, I feel like I wouldn't be able to take a sufficient deep breath if I needed to. Right, right, because it's constricting. It's mm -hmm. constricting. Again, not because you're getting carbon dioxide poisoning, but because there's just not a lot of air there. So we do have another option. Let's go ahead and drop that. In fact, let's just take that off. While you're taking that off, I'm going to show, um, if for some reason you can't find gators, I mean, it could be the gators go by the side just like toilet paper did and you can't and find them anywhere. It could be called something else. Up here, just like we call it pop and you, people down south call it soda. Soda. So we'd have to think. They might be called something else. I but don't know we, what they're called. When mom bought the guys, there's it was dust covering for their side by side. So yeah. if you have a Honda dealership who has sells motorcycles and four wheelers, check those guys out. Check that local business of mm -hmm. yours that you might think is struggling, and see if they have some dust masks, dust covering things like that. There's also these. I do not recommend this. I don't want you to think this, but this was actually like a hair thing, it's right? A hair thing, yeah. And it is super thin. Can you see that you can see through that? It is a little so bad. I've seen people wearing this. I don't agree with this because I I don't know that this is meeting the minimum requirement because I don't think that that's going to stop very much moisture. So be very careful to know that the weird hair things where you can do different things in hair bands, this is not a gator. You know, you do want something that is made with a little bit more um, substance to it. But the other thing that you can do, these are my husband's pajamas. <laughs> were. <laughs> were. Now they're his shorts. <laughs> his shorty pajamas. Yeah. And so what you can do is, um, with the right kind of material, you know, you can still just cut off a couple legs and you've got a couple of gators. And this one I kind of folded back just to show you. All you'd have to do is just line up your seam. I have this right side out. Right, is that right? Oh yeah, yeah. Wrong side out. Wrong side, yeah. So you're just gonna line up your seam with your seam and then just do that stitching in the ditch where I'm sewing along there. And if I do that on both sides, that's going to give me that little pocket. So it's gonna do two things. It's either going to give me two layers so that now I have two layers through there or Again, if you really want to put in what are some of their barriers that they're using. People are using shop towels and different things, whatever you're mm -hmm. using, I don't know. Um, it's just an option for you. And again, we're not going to tell you what to do. We're just going to tell you some of the options and some of the things that we've found. But the gators, for every, mm -hmm. for probably 90% of the guys mm -hmm. from the ages of 11 on up, every single one wants a gator. Um, 
my uh, we have a whole lot of rednecks up here but and I don't think they like it when I say that but that's what they are and um, that's what they like yep. so okay and the nice thing about doing the pants is you don't have to finish that edge that edge won't oh, right. do anything naughty you can throw it in the washing machine and it's gonna come out the way it went in because of the type of fabric that it is mm -hmm. that's exactly right all right so let's talk about the girls so the thing with the girls is that um, same thing and I think the girls that's gonna be kind of a hard thing are the teenage girls because um, Again, you know, they want to look cute. Uh, and so I think it's kind of hard. And um, also, it's that breathability thing. So what we were finding was that, um, so let's start with this. So this is a rayon mask. We ordered a whole bunch of these. Um, this was one that I already had. Moda, which is a fabric company that we buy fabric from all the time, um, they sell these. And so um, we got six different solid colors. You can find them on our website now. Um, and so we thought if we found things that would be... These are the colors. Can we see this? So we thought um, there might be school colors or something else. You could actually add to it and decorate it if you want to, but we liked the size of it. It is, um, it's a large size so that what I did with mine was I went ahead and I added an extra layer of just cotton. You could add a layer of Oli, you could add a layer of Soft and Stay, you could do whatever you wanted to do, and then I also put in a nose piece. So that's all I did to it. And then all I have to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in half. And the other reason I folded it in half is that, um, or the other reason that we got a big one is that if you just wanna fold it in half and then just put a seam there and not add that extra layer of cotton, put a little nose piece in there, you could just leave it like this. So then all you have to do is when you put this on, and the reason I'm gonna put it on like that is that I know then where my nose piece is. So then what I have is I'm just wearing a really pretty scarf in whatever color I want it doesn't make any difference and then when it's time to adjust myself because I'm gonna go in the store or I'm gonna do whatever all I have to do is pull this up put this on and tighten it wait I want my earrings to show that's why we do this in the car before we go in right. so anyway I've tightened this this is absolutely can you hear me this is absolutely breathable it's not constricting at all. It's, it's tight here, but not in a bad way. I think it still looks nice. And I, I believe that if you look at this close enough, you can tell that I'm not just phoning it in with a scarf, that I've really got something else going on there. And then as soon as I'm done with this, and it's really not sucking up to my face. I don't know if you can tell. You know, but again, I also am used to the Jesse mask. I like the Jesse mask. I wear it a lot because I talk a lot and I need that extra room up there and I need that extra air. This is fine with me and if I need to adjust a little bit, I can just tighten it anytime I need to. I can loosen it anytime I need to pretty easily. But what's also really nice about this is that it's not up around my ears. So if I'm wearing oxygen tubing, if I have glasses, if my ears are just super sore, it's all okay and I can keep it as tight or as loose as I want to. And then as soon as I'm done, I can just go ahead and tuck it in and I'm all good and I'm just ready to go for whatever. If I'm, if I'm in a classroom where we're far enough apart and we're just taking a test and I'm not speaking, I can go ahead and just lower my mask a little bit, breathe some quality air, you know, or, or the other thing I noticed is I could even just kind of keep it up over just a little bit so that I have a little bit of room. Anyway, so we liked the scarf idea, and so we really played a lot on some of the different scarves. Brianna, let's put this one on. So this one was a little different one. <coughs> this one is a thinner scarf, so if you find some scarves, let's put our ladies back here. If you find maybe a scarf in your closet somewhere, we didn't pick a matching fabric, we went ahead and just put some soft and stay in there. In school. And that's the other thing to think about is that there might be some high schoolers that would like this sort of idea. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of adults that are wearing this because it's kind of fun. You know, it's nice. They've got that breathability thing going on underneath and they can decorate this any way that they want to. So there might be school that there might be high school girls that will think that this is great. But yeah, so for this, go ahead and show. So what we did, same idea. So it's got the soft and stay here. She's got the nose piece. 
And then what she did, instead of cinching it up tight the way that I did with this one, this is just draping. It's draping, she can bring this in a little bit, she can do whatever, she's still got that whole harem thing going on, um, but there's, it's totally loose here. I mean, it's not up against your face no, at all. Not at all. No matter what she does, so if you, and again, and somebody with asthma, and we do have a teacher that comes in here a lot, she has asthma, we're having her test to this, mm -hmm. but there is massive amounts of air in there, um, there's no heat change in there. Just fluff it up a little bit and put some fresh air in there. Yeah. And again, what we did is we went ahead and put the buttons on here with the adjustable buttonhole elastic so that the idea is that she can make it as tight or as loose as she wants to. And that is necessary because, again, I tightened mine and that's what kept mine there. But to keep that loose, that's, that's what she needed it. to do. And, and kind of any hair, so I can put it behind my pony. Yeah behind her pony, on top of her pony. Yeah, mm -hmm. so she has lots of different options with that. So again, I think that the trick, having a school color scarf, having a pretty scarf, having a couple different colors, it's gonna be a little bit easier in the winter because in the winter, everybody wears a scarf anyway, yeah. but that's why we picked rayon scarves. These are nice, it's a nice uh, blend in terms of the fabric and so it's not cotton, but it's similar to cotton. Rayon is a synthetic man-made fiber that's actually made out of a cellulose that comes from uh, wood pulp. So it's very, very similar to cotton. Um, and so it actually has that breathability and it has that absorbability. Uh, so it actually is fine. It'll, it'll work well for what we're, and so again, you have that option of just wearing just the scarf because you want to meet the minimum requirement or you can add some extra layers in there. Um, like I added the cotton in this one, we added soft and stay in this one. And the other thing too, we just wanted to say is that there might be other scarves. You know, this is one of my favorite ones. This one, of course, is very see-through and knit, but I could easily modify this scarf with a little bit of sewing technique to make this one the one that I'm going to wear to cover my face. Um, the other thing that you can do is we've got this one and maybe this one. I'll put this one on because I have glasses. Oh, and right. I already. So this one, what we did, this one was also just a scarf in my closet. And so this was just one that was, you know, a vacation scarf. And so for somebody that wears glasses and they say, well, they can't stand the masks because they can't figure out how to get something to fit over their glasses. So again, like Brianna was saying, we were saying earlier, you know, you kind of adjust yourself before you go in the store anyway or do whatever. So all I happened to have was these weird little white, um, rounds but you could find easily some jewelry findings at the store you might have something else you could take apart that's a little bit cuter than this little white plastic thing but all I did was I just hand sewed it on um, and then I'm just gonna hook it onto my glasses and then when I put my glasses on oops there you go now I wear my glasses down here. They're also reading glasses. So. Oh, they're also, yeah, <laughs> these are reading glasses. So that was where I put mine because that's where I wear my glasses. So we kind of thought that I had this very um, old lady library thing going on, but you know, it works okay because again, you can see that there's a whole lot of air in there. So this is still minimum requirement in terms of me keeping my germs right there so they don't go anywhere else. So I am still, this is great, this is fine, there's no problem with this at all. If I feel though that I want to add something to it, again, I could very easily add some sort of a layer of an interfacing in there, some extra cotton, I could put a nose piece in there, I could do multiple things with this scarf, but the same idea is that idea that um, what I've got is something that creates that breathability so that I can still. And with the option function. of a nose piece, you could put those rings farther out. So if you didn't yeah. like, if you use your glasses to see as you're walking, I could see mom would fall because yeah. of where those are right there and you're kind of your blind spot. Yeah. So if you were to put them out a little farther, put a nose piece, you'd have it hang kind of low under here, under where your glass rim is and hang onto the earpiece. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. do need them for more than just we just did this for in. demonstration yeah. purposes. Just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Last one. 
is this one. This one doesn't belong to us, so we're not gonna put it on. It is washed. Um, this one is Sarah's, and we just wanna show you. So this is her, she's making these for her girls. So she did a test run for herself. And what she did is she took her measurements from bridge to sternum. So her measurement from here all the way down to here was this. The top part of this is that. So it's that and then she just went all the way down. So she has kind of a little bustier thing yeah. going on. So yeah, this point to sternum. So nose bridge to sternum, that's what that to sternum. is. And so she just added that to that original dust mask pattern from Craft Passion. So this was her pattern. So it's all tucked in there. And then all she has to do is pop this out. And here's her mask. And then she just had, she went ahead and put elastic loops on there so she can tuck that on her ears. So she's all good to go. She's very tall. <laughs> she's very tall. She is about that tall. Um, and so this one fits her. Here's her neck. And then, so she just wears that. You could choose a variety of different fabrics. Um, if you want to, you can make it bigger, smaller. This here, this was a 22 inch square. She just cut the square. She folded it in half on the diagonal and she purposefully left so that she had a smaller layer on the top, bigger layer on the bottom, and she put a little seam line there. She made her mask just the same way she would have otherwise made the mask. There is Oli in there. She added her elastic. All she did was she just added that extra piece, sewed that on there, and that's what she has. So it's kind of a cute idea, and then when she's not using it, she just tucks it in there. She kind of rolled it in there. And so then she has that. You can make this out of um, different fabrics. This doesn't matter what this is made out of. This is just decoration. Accessory. It's just, yeah, just whatever is gonna. So what she found, she is a, she has daughters, and this was what her daughters wanted. They're a little frillier, they wanted some lace, they wanted something kind of cute, and they wanted multiple colors. So, and they're teenagers, picky picky teenagers and this was what they wanted. So again, that whole idea is I think that it's one of these opportunities to sit down with your children or your grandchildren and find out what is their style, what is it they want, what would they wear. Do they want something that is an accessory that's going to be cute um, and have multiples of those? Do they want something that where they're just going to blend in and not be noticed? Is it super important that it's extremely comfortable and breathable? Um, or are they just gonna use it sparingly because maybe they're not maybe they're mostly homeschooling or mostly doing virtual learning? So there's a lot of questions that you need to know. There's a lot of measurements, and these are hopefully just some options to help you to make some decisions. Again, what we have for you, we do have some Oli. We have, the, we have some scarves for you if you can't find those. We have the buttonhole elastic. Um, I think Brianna's gonna put some fun buttons on the website. So there's some things that we have as resources for you. Oh, the nose pieces, that's right. We ordered uh, two cases of the nose pieces because people said they were having a hard time finding those. So, and we have all of those in the same place on our website um, on that mask, uh, face mask webpage. So uh, hopefully this will kind of help to get you started. And again, uh, if you have questions, what we want to do is meet with you for a live YouTube this Sunday, one o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So we'll be able to answer your questions and get you going on face masks for your kids. So in the meantime, what we really want is for you to be safe and more than that, we want you to be nice. Be nice to everyone. It's important, and it's important that we teach our children to be nice. So.